I've done a few videos in the past creating my own GTK applications, but one thing I haven't done, I haven't looked into Qt, the Qt toolkit. So today what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly create a basic Qt application. So let me switch over to my desktop and I'm going to launch an application called the Qt Designer. And if you have any kind of Qt applications and Qt libraries on your system, you probably already have the Qt Designer there. You just didn't know about it. And what this is, this is a really neat program that allows you to very quickly get a Qt application layout designed. So I'm going to create a new Cute application. I'm going to resize this window a little bit. By default, it created this window with two buttons, OK and Cancel. I'm actually going to just click on that and delete that because we're going to add our own widgets. So under Layouts, we have Vertical Layout, Horizontal Layout, Grid Layout, and Form Layout. And this is very similar to GTK applications because they also had a Vertical Layout, Horizontal Layout, and Grid Layout. For starters, let's start with the Horizontal Layout. Let's do something with Horizontal, which means these widgets will have to be side by side next to each other horizontally. And I think the first widget we should play with should be the label widget. Let's imagine that I'm creating a welcome application for my fictional Linux distribution that I call DTOS. So I'm going to go to display widgets. There is the label widget. Now, by default, the label widget says text label. But if I click on it, I can change that right here to welcome to DTOS exclamation. Let's make that lowercase there. Now if I wanted to change the font properties, what I could do is I could go over here and I could actually click on label to highlight it and then filter the properties, search for font, and there is Noto Sans 11. That is the default font that it always defaults to for some reason. Uh, Noto Sans, it's an okay font, but I'm going to use the Ubuntu font. Let's make this Ubuntu and let's make it bold and let's make it a lot bigger since this is kind of like the a uh, header of the program, right? Let's make it 18 point font. Welcome to DTOS. Now let's add a second widget to this horizontal layout, which means these widgets will be side by side. Once again, let's make it a label widget. And once again, it defaults to text label, but I don't want text on this. I'm actually going to make that an empty label because a label doesn't have to be text in a cute application. A label can also be an image if you so choose. So what we can do is I'm going to search for a property called PixMap and PixMap the value is empty but you can click on it, choose file and then search for a file on your system that you want to use. So I've got an image somewhere that I could use, a little logo that I created for DTOS. Let me search for it. And that is the image I want to use. Now, one thing I don't like is I don't like that this text here is aligned to the left. I want it to be aligned in the middle. So what I'm going to do, since I clicked on that, we're searching for properties on this particular label. I can click on it or I can click on it over here. Either one gets me, gets that in focus to where I can search for the property align. There is the alignment. You can see it aligns to the left and it aligns vertically center. Well, I want it to align horizontally center and vertically center. So I'm changing that and I think that looks a lot better. Now let's add some widgets that are not labels. Probably the most important widget you want to add are buttons. And then the most common button is the push button. And you can add buttons all over the place but you probably want to add them inside either the horizontal layout or the vertical layout or the grid layout. And honestly, you probably want to add these inside a group box container first. So let's grab the group box container. Now what a group box container is, is anything that goes in the group box, you can actually assign the group box properties, such as a font property, and all the child widgets that go into the group box will be affected. That way, if I add a million buttons into the group box, I don't have to go in and individually set the font properties for each button. If I assign it to the group box, all the buttons that are a part of that group box will be affected. So let's start with that container. Then I want a grid layout inside the group box. So let's add the grid here. I'll make that a little bigger as well. And then let's add the push buttons inside the grid. So I'll just start with adding about four buttons here. Now you can see the buttons don't form a grid because by default the buttons try to fill 100% the width 
of the grid layout that they're within. So what you have to do is you have to set a maximum size to the buttons. That way they will be side by side. If I click on the group box, let's see if we can actually do this within the group box. So if I search for size, there is size property. That's not the one we want. There is maximum size. That's the one we want. Let's see if I can do maximum size 150. Yes, and actually it affected the entire group box itself, so that is not what I wanted. I'm actually gonna set that back to the default value, so we can't change that. So in this case, I may have to individually go in and do the push buttons. Let's see if I can set the grid layout size. Uh, there is no size for the grid layout. Let's do the push buttons individually then. So let's go to maximum size. Let's make the max width 150. Let's make the max height 40. And that works. And now if I drag this one to the side, ah, okay, it will put them side by side if they can fit side by side. Once again, we need to actually make these 150 by 40. And I'm going to have to go in here and do this for each of the buttons, at least for the size. I think for the text, if I wanted to change the font, I can definitely do that in the group box. For example, let's click on the group box. Again, I can click on the group box here or I can click on the group box here and let's search for font. It defaults to Noto Sans 11, but once again, let's change that to Ubuntu. Let's do bold. Uh, 11 point font will be fine. You can see the font changed. If I wanted to change the labels, I have to individually change the labels in the buttons. I can double click on them and change them. For example, button one, double click on that, button two, etc., etc. If you actually want to preview the work you've already done in a standalone floating window, what you can do is you can go to form here in the menu and do preview. And it will actually show you what your cute application would look like as a window, right? If we went ahead and this was the finished product. Now I don't like the group box label there. Now sometimes you will create a group box and you do want a label, but in my case, I actually didn't need a label there. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add about 10 or 12 buttons here. I may add a few more widgets here. And then I'm gonna cover exactly how we get these buttons to do something using Python as a language. I'm actually gonna choose to actually write this in Python because I think Python is maybe the most common language that people write cute applications in. I know when I did my GTK videos, I chose Haskell because I enjoy programming in the Haskell programming language. And a lot of people really wanted me to do Python for that. So for this, let's do Python. So here is a quick little example application. Again, imagine this is a welcome application for my fictional DTOS Linux distribution. You can see we've got the labels and the horizontal layout here, an image label and then the actual text label. Then I had some other text labels here that are in a vertical layout, one under the other. And then I had the grid layout where I have the buttons, right? Except for this button here, you can see I actually dragged that button in the grid layout so that it's actually taking up two spaces. And this is very easy to do. You can actually just click on it. I wanted to resize it. You can see I could resize it to where it fits up that part of the grid, or I can make it in this case, just take up the uh, center two cells. Then I also created this little check widget here. And you can imagine that this will be, you could check it on and off if you want this program to auto start. Of course, I would have to add some functionality. I'd actually have to write a little bit of Python code to actually uh, make this auto start check button do something. Matter of fact, all the buttons, none of the buttons are going to do anything once we actually generate the code because by default, this is just the layout, right? That's all this is. You know, the cute designer just gives you the layout. To actually make the buttons do something, you need to actually incorporate a programming language and, and with the use of a programming language, make these buttons do something. So now that I've got this, what I could do is I could save this. If I go to save, save as, and I'm gonna save this as cute-01, which I've already got saved, and then I'm done with cute designer. So let's go ahead and get out of that. And I'm gonna open a terminal and I'm gonna zoom way in. I'm gonna CD into the directory that I had that file, which was cute-01 UI. And if I wanted to convert that .UI file 
into a, an actual Python file, right, that we can actually then write some Python code, what I would need to do is I would need to do pi uic5 and then the location of that ui file. So I could do iqt dash ui and then dash o for output. So uh, this is the output file and I would want it to be qt-01.py. Now I'm not going to do this because I've already done it and I don't want to overwrite the work I've done, but that will generate that Python file for us that we could now actually do something with. So I could open this with vim in this case. And this is the code that it automatically generates, right? Now I've cleaned it up a little bit. There weren't line breaks. I went in and actually added the line breaks because by default, the automatically generated code, you know, it, it doesn't do things like, you know, it, it has no sense of actually formatting and things like that. It's just a big block of text. And I added line breaks just for readability purposes. And to show you just one example of getting one of these widgets to do something, I picked one button out of the bunch. I picked this button here to actually assign it some kind of action. So I've got this line here. Let me zoom way in so you can see this line. Self dot key bindings underscore button dot click dot connect and then in parentheses this action here, self dot key bindings underscore button underscore action. So I, when this button is clicked, this key bindings button, I want you to then do the key bindings button action. But what is the key bindings button action? Well, I scroll down, eventually I actually define the action and there is def key bindings button action print pressed so in the terminal or the TTY, you would get a confirmation pressed and then subprocess.run xdg open. So xdg open, in this case, I'm giving it a URL. Basically open that with the default program that should open URLs, which is whatever your default browser is. Now for subprocess to run, you also need to import something. So if I go to the top of the document, you need to actually import subprocess. I also imported sys here. These are not here by default when you convert your UI file over to a Python file. By default, you only have this line here. But of course, as you add more of these Python definitions and you make your widgets do things, you're going to have to eventually import some things. And now that I've done that, let's actually run this. So if I run this using Python, Python, and then let's run the qt01.py program. There is the application, right? So that is what we generated in the Qt designer. And then the only thing I did is I added one action to one button. I may eventually go in and add more actions to other buttons. But again, this is an example. But if I click on this, what's going to happen? The web browser is going to open up that URL that I gave it, right? If I click on it again, it'll open it again. And of course, I can make all of these buttons. I can make the checkbox do things. You know, I, I you could add click events to practically any widget. So that is how you create something using the cute designer. One thing I also did is I played with the background color of the window. Uh, by default, it's just using whatever your default cute theme is set to. But if I get back into the document, let me make it full screen. You can see that under the main window, I added this line here, main window set style sheet, background color, and RGBA. Of course, RGBA is red, green, blue, alpha, and the alpha I set to 200, which means it's going to be slightly transparent. 255 would be completely opaque, zero would be completely transparent. I just wanted to add a little bit of transparency, so I thought the 200 value was a really nice touch. So that is a little bit of how you can create your own Qt application using the Qt designer and using PyQt. That was actually what allows us to use the PyUIC command that you saw me in the terminal, which converts that UI file to a Python file. So for those of you that are wanting to get started in Qt development, I hope this is a good starting point for you. If you guys would like to see more videos along the way, well, maybe we'll do some more stuff with Qt. Maybe keep working on this particular application or maybe create other applications using other widgets. I'm open for that if you guys want to see more videos on this topic. 
Now, before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of this episode. Gabe James, Matt, Paul, Royal West, Armor Dragon, Commander Angry, George, Lee, Methos, Nate, Ur, Jan, Paul, Peace, Arsene, Vidor, Reality, Teats, Red Prophet, Roland, Soul, Astri, Tools, Deviler, War Gen 2, and Ubuntu, and Willie. These guys, they're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. Without these guys, this quick look at the cute designer and Pi QT, it wouldn't have been possible. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these fine ladies and gentlemen. All these names you're seeing on the screen right now, these are all my supporters over on Patreon. I don't have any corporate sponsors. I'm sponsored by you guys, the community. If you like my work and want to see more videos about Linux and free and open source software, subscribe to DistroTube over on Patreon. Peace, guys.